Now BMW over the years have obviously made a whole series of fantastic M engines that us enthusiasts really like. Let's think about the S54, the S65, the S85, but those are all naturally aspirated engines. And we of course are now in this newfound era of turbocharged engines. So today we're gonna to be taking a closer look at BMW's S58 three liter twin turbocharged straight six. So to me then, the S58 is a steady evolution of the BMW straight six engine lineup. Obviously more recently we had the S55, which is a very similar format to the S58 being around three liters of displacement and with twin turbochargers. I think it's really important just to highlight what is different between the S58 and the B58. Now the B58 has gone down in history as a, one of the great BMW engines. It's a fantastically strong piece of engineering. It makes a great sound and make great power. The S58 though, it actually has a slightly smaller displacement than the B58. So it's got a larger bore, but a shorter stroke. And essentially what that means is it favors high end power. So it's making more of its power in the upper end of the rev range, which is kind of more of a characteristic of naturally aspirated engines. And we'll get into a, that a bit more when we take it out on the road, because you really do feel that. It's got a proper top end to it, which you don't necessarily associate with a lot of turbocharged engines. And I think that, really is just a, an amazing feature to have in, in an M car. Now from the factory, these engines are extremely strong. And I think a lot of those sort of issues that we've seen on previous M engines, whether that be sort of rod bearings or even like the crank hub issue with the S55, in theory, are now kind of sorted out with this engine. So it's got a forged crankshaft, it's got forged connecting rods, it's got forged pistons and lightweight pistons as well, which again, help with the higher RPM power. So in theory, out of the box, this thing can make huge power. Now in the M2, in the G87 M2, which I've got with me here, this is making about 460 PS and 405 foot-pounds of torque. And those figures are sort of a baseline. It should be making at least that because we know that BMW tend to underrate their engines. And I've seen videos of these cars on dynos, obviously making kind of in excess of the standard 460. So I'm sure that they're making a bit more than that. Running about 17 PSI of boost in the standard form here. It's got a compression ratio of about 9.3 to one, which is down from the B58's 11 to one. And essentially what that means is the engine is under less stress, but critically, the boost can be turned up more. So what people have found is obviously you put a ream up on these and they make crazy power very, very easily because there's just so much room with the engineering and the mechanics of these to, to really just make more power easily. Now, of course, we've seen the S58 being used across various BMW M cars. It, it launched back in 2019 in the X3 and the X4M. We've obviously seen it, seen it being rolled out in the G80 M3, the G82 M4, and more recently the G87 M2. So I think this is probably the lowest power form that you'll see of this engine in the M2. Uh, there was a version of the M4 CSL that had 550 horsepower. So anywhere from sort of 460 to 550 um, is where these engines are at out of the factory. Obviously we know the aftermarket and people that like to tune these things have pushed them to a thousand horsepower relatively easily, which is pretty impressive. In terms of the sound, obviously it's a classic sort of BMW M straight six sound. It's quite raspy, but you'll hear more of that in a minute. And I think that's really all the talking we want to do outside the car because at the end of the day, we want to drive this thing. So let's take it out on the road and see what it's like. So if we think back over the years about some of these older M cars, the thing that always stands out to me is how much the engine has been a centerpiece to the experience of that car. Think about the E46 M3, the E60 M5, the E90 M3. When I think about those cars, I think about those engines at high RPMs screaming away. So in my view, every M engine should be kind of trying to achieve the same sort of thing. So the question is, does that hold true for the S58? Now we know in this day and age, there is quite often a decent bit of fake sounds going on. And I think in the G87 M2 at least, that does seem to have been toned down a bit. So I've got the engine in the completely sort of efficient mode right now, which seems to have minimal, if any, fake sound, to be honest. 
which you can probably hear that a little bit in the background and I'll open it up a bit more in a second but it's actually quite nice it's just really sort of characteristic straight six sound you can hear some valve train the injectors it's not over the top you know there's a, there's a decent bit of sound but it's quite nice when you're just cruising around there's not too much kind of extra noise going on and the exhaust is in the quietest mode as well now of course that all kind of changes once you start ramping it up into the Sport and Sport Plus modes. Now when that happens in this car the exhaust valves open so you get a lot more exhaust sound and also pops and crackles and things like that. So now let's switch it into the Sport mode. You can start to hear the engine a little bit more now. But I still think it's a great sound. As I said before it's a really quite raspy sound but it's so sort of characteristic BMW M takes a bit of getting used to the S58. I think I've said this before but I definitely think the B58 is kind of the better sound of the engine but yeah and of course once it's on boost there is just talk everywhere. Listen to that. Now as I said it's really got quite a top end to it this engine. So peak torque starts at about 2,750 RPM, but it runs all the way up into the upper 5,000 RPM range. So for all intents and purposes, there's kind of torque everywhere. And it really makes it feel just so fast when you've got torque everywhere. But when it comes to the upper RPM range, it's actually making peak power sort of close to 7,000 RPM. And the red line is 7,200 RPM. So it's really got a proper top end to it. Turbo lag, of course, these days it's really quite minimal. I think in the lower RPMs you tend to feel it a little bit more if you were to just kind of really put your foot down. It just takes a second or so for the boost to build and you just feel this real surge of power. But once you're higher up in the RPM ranges, you don't feel it at all. And certainly if you're easing into the throttle, there is virtually no turbo lag, which is really impressive. And I find because there's just so much power and torque everywhere, most of the time I'm really only at sort of partial throttle applications because it's just so brutal if you go full throttle. It just chucks all this power and torque at you. Let's just give it a little bit out of here then. <laughs> I love that sound, it's really great. Day. there's just so much at the top end it's actually quite easy to sort of hit the limiter if you're not being careful because it pulls just so aggressively in the upper part of the RPM range Now just talking a bit more about the mechanicals of this engine there, we do have BMW's sort of double van off system, which is a variable valve timing, and we also have valve tronic, which is a variable valve lift. Um, so really what that's doing is just helping the engine to breathe a lot more efficiently. And again, that just helps you extract all this power and torque at kind of across the entire RPM range. But I think there's gonna be that obvious question of, can an M engine really be as good with turbochargers? You know, it's been so many classic M engines over the years and the naturally aspirated ones are the ones that a lot of people really lust after. But I do think turbocharging has a place. I mean it's a completely kind of different offering to naturally aspirated engines in terms of what you can do in terms of the level of performance I guess but also the sound and usability is another big one because the amazing thing about the S58 is is how efficient it can be. If you've got this in the efficient mode and you're taking it easy on a longer run, 30 mpg is very, very achievable. And yet, 
you know, it's making upwards of 450 horsepower in this day of tune. There's not a whole lot of engines that can quite do that. But maybe we come back to that question. Is it the centerpiece of the car? Well, I certainly feel in the M2 it is. You can probably just hear it buzzing away in the background. Yeah, there's a little bit of fakery, but it's it's almost like authentic fakery. It's kind of the way I would describe it. Like it, it sounds real. I think microphones sometimes pick up on it a lot more than it actually sounds in person, but in person it sounds really good. Yeah, there we go. The mid-range is just so strong. Yeah, so safe to say it is a complete powerhouse. I think it's it's all the power you would need, and I really love the kind of the sound of these BMW straight six engines as well. It's just something I always seem to come back to. Really, really like how they sound. So let's maybe just do a little launch here from first gear, so you can see kind of just how aggressive this thing is off the line. I'm going to put the gearbox into the fastest setting as well, which will just make these changes very, very quick with the ZF8 speed. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't really get bored about that level of performance, I have to say. Yeah, so the S58 then, I think this really is, coming back to that initial thing I mentioned, is that steady evolution of the BMW M straight six engines. Yes, we've got some turbochargers now, but I think even over the S55, there's some really quite notable improvements. Interestingly, with that engine, a lot of people have commented that it doesn't quite have much of a sort of top end on it in terms of power delivery. Whereas as I've said, with the S58, there seems to have been a lot more focus around giving it a proper top end. And I really like that because it just, it means the engine has so much more character and what I find is sort of below 3,000 RPM, you've kind of got this, this one character, and then once you get above 3,000 RPM, all the boost starts to build. You've got all these new noises and sounds, and the power delivery as well feels very linear. So it's almost just got this two sides to it, and I really, really like that. It sort of means you don't get bored of it. So I've been doing some reading on the S58, and it's, it's really interesting because I can see clearly that cooling has been sort of top of the priority list with this engine. I mean, if you just look at the front end of a lot of modern M cars using the S58, the amount of radiators and sort of airways to feed air through and keep the thing cool is amazing. It's really impressive and, of course, helps give them some pretty good road presence too. But I can certainly see that on track, there would be no issues at all pushing on this engine, at least in stock form, all day. The cooling is clearly very, very good. And interestingly as well, a part of the cylinder head was made using a type of 3D printing. And essentially what that allowed you to do is to increase the number of cooling channels. Again, helping for more efficient cooling of the head. Which, very kind of nice piece of engineering there. So how do we conclude this video then? Do we think the S58 is one of BMW M's best engines? Personally, I think it has to be, because if you look on paper, we've seen a lot of the previous issues now kind of sorted out with these engines. So the reliability is there, the power is there, the tunability is there, but also you've kind of got this efficiency point to it as well, where we can actually achieve really good MPG and the engines are very easy to live with without much compromise. And I think that's a way that a lot of the M cars have kind of gone anyway. We've gone from being these really really hard edged cars to yes they sort of have that hard edge side to them still but also they're very easy to live with on the daily so these engines make sense in those sorts of platforms now don't get me wrong i absolutely love a naturally aspirated engine i have an e30 myself that's got a two liter m20 straight six in it and i really really like the sort of raw analog feel of naturally aspirated engines but the power of these twin turbocharged BMW straight sixes is just, it's incredible. And it's amazing to see how these engines have developed over the years. So I think that's gonna be all from me for this video. I hope you've enjoyed watching. If you're new to the channel, please do consider subscribing. That's all, I will catch you in the next one.